Uh, hello class, so we'd like to look at the uh, vacation assignment uh, questions. So let's get started together. First one, the root of the equation and then you see these kind of descriptions. Soon as you see imaginary real and all these words, and what you can think of is the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. Let's see what we end up getting. b is equal to negative 10, so negative 10 squared minus 4. a is 1, which is the coefficient of x squared. c is equal to 25. And once you calculate this one, negative 10 squared becomes 100 minus 100, which is equal to 0. You see, when the discriminant is equal to 0, then what kind of nature, or what nature of the root would we end up getting? It will be real, rational, equal. So therefore, choice 3 becomes our answer. And I strongly suggest you to memorize uh, other uh, uh, characteristics also. Number 2. So we want to find out the solutions here. We can factor this one by x first. Then we get x squared plus x minus 2 equal to 0. And once you factor this one further, x, and we have x plus 2 times x minus 1 equal to 0. Now, then here we end up getting x must be equal to 0 from here. From the second factor, we will be end up getting negative 2 to make that into equal to 0. From third factor, we will end up getting 1. So 0, negative 2, and 1, which is choice 2 becomes our answer. All right, what is the solution set? Here, let's try to look into this one. Uh, you see, uh, one thing that which we can do is, for, from a number line, this portion can be equal to 0 when a is equal to, that's right, uh, negative 3 over 2. So when a is greater than negative 3 over 2, then we know that this portion is equal to positive. So uh, we can rewrite it as 4a plus 6. When it's positive, it doesn't do anything. So minus 4a equals negative 10. Now, uh, another one is uh, when this portion is negative, such as in this, in, in this interval, we can rewrite this one as negative 4a plus 6 minus 4a is equal to negative 10. Now, then once you do this one, Let's try to solve this one, see what we end up getting. Negative 4a minus 6 minus 4a is equal to negative 10. If you to combine, to, uh, combine them together, negative 8a, and, uh, which is equal to negative 4. And a becomes 1 half. You see, it says a equals 1 half. But the thing is, we are looking at the interval that's, uh, where a is less than negative 3 over 2, so that wouldn't make sense. And or you can plug in 1 half into the original equation, then you will realize that that wouldn't make sense either. How about the second one? When you combine them together, wait a minute, 6 is equal to negative 10, but we know that that's not true. So in fact, we're not going to have any answers. Empty set becomes our answer. What is the conjugate? Conjugate is simply the same thing as it is, except the changing the sign in the middle, which becomes choice 4. Now, when this one is subtracted from here, then basically what we're looking at is 5 over 2x squared, 3 over 4x plus 1. So from that means it's the first one, 3 over 2x squared, minus 1 fourth, x minus 4. That's basically what it's stating, This uh, subtracting this one from here. So let's look at it, then we get 5 over 2x squared minus 3 over 4x plus 1 and then subtracting 3 over 2x squared negative negative becomes positive 1 fourth x and negative negative becomes positive 4 then what happened 5 over 2 minus 3 over 2 becomes simply 2 over 2 which is equal to x squared negative 3 over 4 plus 1 fourth becomes negative 2 fourth x and then plus 5 then what is that equal to? Uh, that's equal to choice 2. All right, let's look at number 6. How do we find the uh, solution set for this one? First, we can bring uh, 10 over to the other side. We end up getting x squared 
minus 3x minus 10 is greater than 0. Then we can assume is x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. Then what do we end up getting? We get x minus 5 and x plus 2 is equal to 0. So therefore, x is equal to 5 and negative, 5 or negative 2. So those two works as our boundaries for our inequalities here, based upon our assumption, having the inequality equal to equation. So here we have negative 2 and then 5. Now, once you look into this section, what do we end up getting? The values of x's are less than negative 2, that means how about negative 5? Once you plug in negative 5 here, or here, let's try to plug in negative 5 here, then we get 25, negative 3 times negative 5 becomes uh, 15, so 25 plus 15, which is 40, minus 10 becomes 30, so this portion is positive. In between, why don't we just use uh, the, uh, uh, that, um, which works by the way, positive, that's, and then uh, 0. If you have to plug in 0, then this becomes 0, this becomes 0, negative 10 is not greater than 0, so that's one wouldn't work. What if you have to plug in a number on the right side, such as 10? Then we get 10 squared becomes 100, minus 30, minus 10. Still we get 60, which is greater than 0. So our answer is... this one and these two intervals but since uh, we have just greater than sign uh, we're gonna have open circuit in both cases so which one is our answer x has to be less than negative 2 or x has to be greater than 5 choice 3 becomes our answer alright number 7 now uh, we want to use the completing the square then first we need to subtract 6x then we get x squared minus 6x plus 2 equal to 0. But uh, to have the completing the square, we're going to subtract 2 from each side, so we get x squared minus 6x equals negative 2. But what would you end up adding to make the completing the square? That's right, we're going to look at the b value, divide that by 2, and then square it. So when you divide the negative 6 by 2, then we get negative 3. Square that, it becomes 9. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. Then left side becomes x minus 3 squared. And the right side now becomes 7. So that becomes our answer, which is choice 2. Let's look at number 8. Here, the fact that we have negative exponent, that means that's equal to 1 over x to the uh, 2 over 5. The denominator 5 is the index of the root, so we get 5th root, and we have x squared. Therefore, our answer will be choice 4. Alright, now let's look at number 9. Sum is negative 3. That means, uh, how do you find the sum? Sum is equal to negative b over a. Now, if a is equal to... 1, then we get to realize that since that has to be equal to negative 3, well, I can put negative 3 over 1, then b must be equal to 3, if a is equal to 1. Let's look at it. Product is equal to c over a, which is equal to 2. Then if a is equal to 1, then c would have been equal to 2. But the thing is then, the ratio of the coefficient has to be 1, 3, 2. We don't have anything that goes 1, 3, 2. This one is 1, negative 3, and 2, so that, that wouldn't work. But when you look at choice 3, that's quite interesting because a is not equal to 1, but what if a equals 2? If a equals 2, then b has to be doubled, which becomes 6. c has to be doubled, which becomes 4. So choice 3 becomes our answer. Number 10. What is that equal to? All right, to rationalize the denominator, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply top and bottom by Radical x plus 2. Radical x plus 2. Then you get to realize that denominator is x plus 2. But the numerator is, wait a minute, 
we had a radical x plus 2 here. But what can you factor this one out? You can factor out 2. Then we get x plus 2 also. You will realize that these two will cancel out, and our final answer is what? 2 times square root of x plus 2. That becomes our final answer, which is choice 4. All right. Number 11. How do you solve this one algebraically? 16 and 64, in fact, when you look at them carefully, we realize that the uh, uh, 2 is the common uh, base. In other words, this becomes 2 to the 4th power, 14 to the 2x plus 3 power. Here becomes 2 to the 6th power is 64, and x plus 2. But exponent to exponent, we got to multiply them together, so we get 2 to the 8x plus 12 which is equal to 2 to the 6x plus 12. Now, then since bases are the same, we realize that numerator also has to be the same. Then here we end up getting um, 8x plus 12 must be equal to 6x plus 12. In other words, when you subtract 12, we get 8x uh, equals 6x. I'm subtracting 6x, then we get 2x is equal to 0. Then what's the value of x? x equals 0. And that's the only value that will make these two parts equal to each other. Number 12. How can we simplify this one? Since we have top and bottom as the same radical, what if I were to put them together? Then I get 108, x to the fifth, y to the eighth power, all over 6x y to the fifth. Now in this case I can cancel things out because both of them are within the radical. 6 cancels out here. We get uh, 18. Cancels out becomes 4. y to the third. Then we get 18 x to the fourth y to the third. Uh, when you break this one down further you get to realize that 18 is what? 2 times 9. 9 is perfect square, which can come out. And then x to the 4th times y squared times y. In this way, you realize that all the perfect squares can come out of the radical while the other one stays. Therefore, we get 3 x squared because x to the 4th comes up becomes x squared. y squared becomes simply y squared root of 2y. That becomes our final answer. Alright, we'll stop here for the part one and then we'll continue later. See you later. Bye-bye.